Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings everyone and welcome. This is Omar Balfaki. And today I'm starting a new series with you guys. And I think I'm going to call it Inspired by Games. And as the title suggests, uh, it will be about imitating some features from our favorite games and trying to implement it in Unity. And I'm doing it for two main reasons. One, because it is a great approach to practice. It's like reverse engineering. You do uh, existing things and try to imitate the same thing. So you learn a lot with that method. And two, just because it's cool. Come on, imagine you just take any um, any feature in any game and ta-da, it's in your own game. That's cool. That's a reason by itself. And the game that I want to start with is God of War. I've been playing it recently and uh, I was like, yeah, why not start with God of War? It's such a, a great game and uh, I loved that feature, um, the Axe of Kratos. And that's what we will be doing today trying to imitate the axe of Kratos. So this is the end results. You can throw it, pull it back and throw it. And it's just simple, but it's cool. I could play with this all day. All right, I hope that you're as excited as I am. If you're ready, then let's get started. So as you can see here, um, this is the player object. And then here we have the axe. In your case, it might be different. You have your um, weapon stored in somewhere else. But in my case, the axe is just a child of the main player. And the axe is nothing but an empty game object that has a rigid body component on it. And it has a children, which is the graphics and the colliders of the axe itself. And one more thing remember to have is kinematic to be checked because we don't want the rigid body to be moving or uh, falling down or anything else before throwing it yet. And one more thing, as you can see here, the pivot point is here. It's not in the center, it's not within the axe, but it's here because I think here should be the center of mass because I want it to be rotating around this instead of somewhere else. You can do your own pivot, so it's up to you. All right, so let's create the script. I'm going to call it throwable axe. Create an ad and let's open the script. All right, before we start with anything, the axe has three different states. One is throwing the axe itself, so throw axe. And then returning the axe, so return axe. And then after the axe is returned, we want to reset the axe. So reset axe. These three, uh, later there will be three different methods. And now we're going to start with throwing the axe itself. Uh, so we're going to create a void method. We're going to call it throw axe. To get access to the axe, we need to store it in a variable. And it's going to be of type rigid body. We won't need the start method. So we're just going to remove it and then create a public rigid body. Call it axe. And then here, to add force to your rigid body, simply you access it and then add force. And then here you have vector 3, which represents the direction of the force that you want to add. And in our case, we want to throw it forward axis of the camera. But the problem is if I said just directly uh, vector 3 to forward, the z axis is static. So if I'm looking up, the axis would be still the positive Z axis, but we want it to be localized. We convert the local forward of the camera to the world point. To do so, I'm going to get the main camera. Dot main. Okay, so I'm going to use transform direction. It transform direction from local space to world space. And the thing I want to convert to world space instead of local is the forward direction vector 3 dot forward and then I'm gonna multiply it by the force let's say 50 or we can just create public float and call it um, throw force equals 50 and simply replace it here throw force and one more thing as you recall the axe is set to kinematic so we want to disable that before throwing because if you haven't 
it won't accept that force it will just ignore it so x dot is kinematic equals false just disable it and make sure that this thing comes before adding the force because we want to disable it and then apply force um, to it so with that it will work but we need to call this function so in the update method I want to call it when the player hits the left mouse button so if input dot get button up fire one in unity fire one is identified as left mouse button so once it's clicked we're gonna call throw x all right save it and go back we go to player we go down and then here we see two new fields one is the force which is 50 and then axe which is none at the moment so we will just drag the axe rigid body and hit play all right so if I click the left mouse button it throws it but eh, as you can see there's no power so I'm just gonna stop the game go back because by default um, adding force uses a normal uh, force mode I guess it's accelerated so it goes from 0 to 50 or in a way that it's a bit um, slow but we want it to be instant force to get that instant force if we go to force mode dot there is impulse as it says here add an instant force so that's what we need save it and go back hit play and let's see now all right now we're talking one more time all right let's throw it here okay as you can see once i rotate the player the axe rotates with us why is that well because the axe is still a child of the player and to fix it is pretty simple axe dot transform the parent equals null we just set the parent to null now it is detached from the player hit play and let's see throw it and move it's not following us okay that's cool let's get back to the player all right now we're done with throwing the axe and one more thing um, I'm gonna follow the axe um, just press FF twice to follow the axe so once I throw it you can see the axe as you can see it throws it but it's not rotating as we want it to be so we'll go back and then add another kind of force which is torque add torque this time we want the direction of the axe itself so axe dot transform dot transform direction we want the x axis so vector 3 dot right and then just multiply it by 100 maybe and then again we want it to be impulse so we want to see it um, spot throw it and as you can see it is rotating all right that's cool now we're done with throwing the axe now we want to return it and to do that I'm just gonna create a new void return I'm oh, sorry return come on return axe throwing the axe was simple because we just add force at one frame and then it acts upon that but to return it we need a target to get back to it so I'm gonna need public transform target and then we're gonna create a private boolean is returning equals false once we throw the axe is returning equals false and then when we return it is returning equals true and to get the axe back there are um, plenty of ways the first way I did was simply by doing this axe to position plus equals target dot position minus axe dot position but with this thing it will be a linear movement but I don't want that so I did some researches how to make it return from point A to point B with a curve and I found this great formula it's called the quadratic Bezier curve as you can see here we have three points A B C it goes from A to C 
without um, touching point B, the one in the middle. It just gradually goes towards it, but without touching it. So it becomes a really smooth and uh, good curve. So we want to achieve something similar to that. So here would be our axe, the wherever position we left our axe. And here's the player uh, or the target. And then we need another uh, midpoint here to affect it. So we, we will call it curve point maybe. So it goes whoosh, in a curvy look. I'm not going to explain more about that equation, but I'm going to leave a few links uh, in the description below. Some great videos that I watched. Uh, it's interesting. <clears throat> so I'll just leave it there. I'm just going to remove that. We don't need it. All right. So when we return the axe, I want to stop its velocity equals vector 3.0. So it stops, it freezes, and then axe dot is kinematic equals true because we don't want it to be affected by force anymore we're gonna affect its position directly all right and then as i said previously when we return we need to have the old point of the axe by now we just have the target point and then i'm going to add another one which is the curve point and then private vector 3 we call it old position so once we return it old position equals x dot position we have the curve we will assign it later on all right to return the x i'm just going to do the same thing here copy that paste it instead of fire one fire two which is the right mouse button and here return x and then because as i said previously uh, returning the axe requires more calculations than this so that's why we have the boolean variable here so we will check if is returning then we will do return the older returning calculations now we need to get the quadratic curve equation so we're going to convert the equations from this to this all right or even make it easier than this um b q c bezier quadratic curve as you can see it accepts four different variables these three are the three different points so first point would be um the old position and then one will be the point that affects the curve which is the curve point we created here and last is the target itself and then t here as you can see t is between 0 and 1 so if it's 0 it starts here if it's 1 it's here if it's half it's going to be somewhere here so basically it's like a percentage for um, the total trip okay and we're going to link that to time once we return it back it will start moving back based on time i know it's a bit complicated but there will be uh, links in the description uh, explaining this uh, bezier curve so uh, if you're interested you can just go learn more but if you're not then let's continue with the tutorial <laughs> all right what we can do is uh, we can get these three variables but we still don't have this but we want to link it with time so I'm gonna create a private float and call it time set it to 0 0.0 F and um, if it's returning we check if time is less than 1 that means we still haven't reached our last destination then we're gonna add time dot delta time just to increase it as a simple timer and as long as it's doing this we can update the position of our axe so axe dot position equals get bqc point and here we're gonna pass time point zero would be the old position and then the curve point and finally the target oops sorry um, curve point dot position we want the positions as vector 3 and the target dot position 
back to Unity. Go from the top, and as you can see here, we have the target. To make it easier, we're just gonna put some um, icons. And then the curve point, it's somewhere here. Set another icon for it. So as you can see, if we throw the ax here, it will, and these two are here, so it's gonna be something like this. A slight curve, right? Almost like a J. So we're just gonna drag these here. These two are nothing but empty game objects. So curve target, I'm sorry, yeah, curve point, and um, the target itself. All right, as you see, uh, as you can see, it returns back, but we still haven't reset it the axe, and it's not a child of the player anymore. So, here we said if it's less than one, then it means it hasn't reached last destination. Else, if it reaches, then we're gonna reset our axe, and we're gonna create it here. Reset axe. So we just call it here, reset axe, and what we want to do is, is returning, we set it to false, so it's not returning anymore, so it doesn't have to go to these calculations anymore. Uh, and then axe.position equals target.position, axe.rotation equals target dot rotation and before these two axe dot transform dot parent equals the transform of its new parent in my case I've attached this script to the player and the player is the parent of this axe so I'm just gonna type transform because this thing refers to the player but if you got the parent in other object then pass that object here so let's go back All right, now we, oops. Oh yeah, when we return the X, we set time to zero because we forgot it at one, so it keeps resetting it, but we don't want that. So let's throw it one more time and yes. Okay, one more last adjustment. As you can see here, if it is upside down, it goes back and then suddenly it resets its position. We want it to be more um, smooth, like smoother transition. So we're gonna add it here as well. Axe dot rotation equals quaternion dot slurp from its current rotation to the new rotation, which is the target dot rotation and then the time, the amount of time, let's say, uh, I don't know, 50 multiplied by time dot delta time. Hopefully this is a, a good number, a fast number. Okay, let's throw it. Okay, I guess that's cool. Now we have our Kratos bar. Never mind. So this is the end of today's tutorial. I hope you learned something useful. And if you got any suggestions for the upcoming game or feature, please let me know. Comment below what you think about this series. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe to get more of these game development tutorials. This is Omar Bafaki, and until then, see ya.